All right, so the Winnipeg Jets are lit. They have signed some big name defensemen and they have turned a weakness into a strength. After sweeping the Edmonton Oilers 4-0, they were reverse swept by the Montreal Canadiens due to their lack of defensive play. So without further ado, welcome to the Worst Sports Channel on YouTube, Hawk Garbage Sports with me, Coach Ryan D. Join me on this journey today as we break down the Jets' new signings of their two new defensive toys. We go over the roster construction and I give you Two really big pieces of information. Where do the Jets stand on their cap situation and what are they going to do about re-signing Cop, Pionk, and Stanley? As well as the fact of, are the Jets done adding pieces? And do I think they're an actual contender to win the Stanley Cup this year? I mean, they're pretending and making moves like they certainly think they are. So let's roll the intro and find out. Here's And if you're new to Hawk Garbage Sports, please drop a like and a subscribe. We cover all teams in the NHL. We're huge bias Jets fans with really good analytical breakdowns and coaches lessons on this wonderful game of hockey. So whether you are advanced or a newbie to this game of puck, subscribe up with us. All right. So the Winnipeg Jets two defensive moves are clearly an overcompensation for the fact that their weak decor last year was unable to carry them through the promised land and through the Montreal Canadiens who were predominantly built on goaltending and defense. The Winnipeg Jets boast one of the best, deepest forward crews in the National Hockey League, as well as one of the best goaltenders in the National Hockey League with Connor Hellebuck. So the Winnipeg Jets have now bolstered their defensive back end with grit, size, tough, and positive plus minus players, Brendan Dillon and Nate Schmidt. And boy, howdy, is Nate Schmidt a beauty. Check out a couple of his interviews. He talks about the fact that he was, he had to think about his move to Winnipeg by taking his time to cut down some trees and debate whether or not he wanted to be here until his good buddy Paul Stasny, another fantastic signing of the Winnipeg Jets, gave him a little ring on the telephone there and said, Schmitty, you got to come down to Winnipeg. You're going to love it. And he obliged. So he is thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to have him. So the Winnipeg Jets defensive core likely looks something like this. Josh Morrissey is your number one on the left side with Nate Schmidt, a left-handed defenseman known for playing the right side, paired with Josh Morrissey in the 1-2 spot. The three, four spots are likely taken up by some combination of Neil Pionk and Brendan Dillon. Some combination? You mean the combination? Yeah, that's likely the combination. Now, you could move Pionk with Morrissey and keep Dylan and Schmidt together, which is possible, or even Dylan DeMello with Brendan Dylan, Dylan with Dylan. Funny. I'm very punny today, simply because of the connection that Dylan's had playing back in the day. But Brendan Dylan also has a connection with Nate Schmidt, making Dylan's and connections and American love and family stories all over the place in Winnipeg and Canada. Whatever. The defensive core is awesome. This is size. This is grit. This is toughness. This will play well in the central division. That leaves one final spot open if everybody is healthy, and it is either going to be filled by Nathan Beaulieu with a $1.2 million cap hit. Logan Stanley, Ville Hanola, or Dylan Sandberg. The likely front-running candidate is Nathan Beaulieu. I know, it hurts too. Ugh, I hate it. But the likely front-running candidate is Beaulieu with Stanley coming in as number seven. I hope it is Logan Stanley, and I hope we end up getting Schmidt, Stanley, and Dylan all in on the top six because that is big, mean, and nasty to play against. And do not forget about Neil Pionk. He may be small, but he led the defensive core of the Winnipeg Jets last year in hits. This guy loves to throw the body. He's nasty to play against, and he worked over McDavid pretty good in round one of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. Josh Morrissey, definitely also nothing to be trifled with. He's got a chippy play to him as well, too. And we have seen Dylan DeMello exude toughness game in and game out. So this is going to be a real nasty core to play against. A lot of skill up front, lots of pretty, lots of scoring, filled with lots of punishment and hits in the defensive zone. So now with Winnipeg having an elite goaltender, likely the deepest defensive core we've had since 2019 and maybe even deeper than 2019. I love Bufflin and I love Truba and I love Myers, but this grit and what this core is bringing now may actually be a better compliment to Connor Hellebuck than those six amazing defensemen from the 2019 playoff run. The forwards are bolstered by depth among depth among depth. What are we going to do about Andrew Kopp, Neil Pionk, and Logan Stanley? Well, the Winnipeg Jets, if they play Brian Little's long-term IR salary cap situation correctly, have roughly 10 to $12 million available depending on which source you look at. 
If you go to Puckapedia, it's $5 million plus Little's $5 million hit for $10 million. If you go to CapFriendly.com, it is $7 million plus Brian Little's $5 million cap hit. So it's somewhere in between there. So they have enough room to sign these three players. Let's go take a look at the Jets situation here. All right, so as you can see here, the Winnipeg Jets on Puckapedia have about $5 million in cap space available to sign players. They only have 33 of 50 contracts, so they're definitely not done when it comes to signing depth pieces and entry-level NHL contracts and two-way contracts. As we take a look at the cap breakdown, we notice that Wheeler, Connor, Shifley, and Ehlers come in with the largest cap hits, with Brian Little's 5.2 moving to long-term IR. If done correctly, Pierre-Luc Dubois coming in at $5 million, and then a really great signing with Paul Stasny and Adam Lowry. This is a really nice core here from Wheeler down to Lowry. Then when you add some of the younger talent between Veseline and Gustafsson Harkins, you definitely start seeing the makings of a possible cup contender. Don't worry, Colorado, we'll get to you. Matthew Perot likely isn't going to return with the Winnipeg Jets. That's my guess. And Andrew Kopp is likely seeking somewhere between four and five million dollars. He would probably get it on the open market as an RFA. So the big question will be, is Kopp going to sign a one-year deal as his RFA and bridge and move into unrestricted free agency, or will Kevin Dayoff be able to lock him up to a little bit lengthier team-friendly deal? Looking at the Jets' defensive core, we know Morrissey, Schmidt, Dylan and DeMello are our highest paid grouping of defensemen. Then we have Bolu, Hanola, and Niku still on the roster coming in there for depth. We know that Logan Stanley and Neil Pionk are both likely to be re-signed by the Winnipeg Jets. The question for Logan Stanley is pretty simple. It's probably one to $1.5 million. But Neil Pionk, here's where it gets funny. So I've seen a lot of talk about Neil Pionk's contract. I don't see any way that Neil Pionk doesn't ask for Josh Morrissey style money. He is the quarterback of the Winnipeg Jets power play. Almost all of the offense on the back end drives through Pionk. The addition of Dylan and Schmidt are defensive minded defensemen, as well as you have DeMello and Bolu in there or Logan Stanley, who are all defensive first guys. So you need someone that can push the pace and create offense from the back end. And that guy is Neil Pionk, and he has just become an even rarer commodity commodity for the Winnipeg Jets right now based on the signings. So Pionk could likely command and does likely deserve anywhere between five and six point two million dollars. The question is, how long can we sign Pionk for? Can Pionk land on a six year deal with the Winnipeg Jets, ideally even up to eight years, because this guy is definitely going to be a staple of the Winnipeg Jets blue line for some time. I personally am comfortable giving anywhere between five point eight and six point two million dollars. I think he definitely deserves it. I think this is a guy that needs to be locked in. And he's one of our only right handed shooting defensemen. So there are a lot of reasons that the Pionk camp can demand top dollar and they definitely deserve it and should likely get it. But Chevel Dayoff has been known to be stingy and battle these things out so we'll see where he ends up so with cop having well previous arbitrations with kevin Dayoff and the winnipeg jets and andrew cop have pre having previous disagreements with kevin Dayoff over his worth and his pay and neil pionk being able to command what he can that will likely eat up most of the remaining salary cap space for the Winnipeg Jets. So I do not see any more big signings coming in unless we are able to make a trade. Now, finally, is this team ready to compete for a cup? Well, let's take a look at the Central right now. Colorado loses Grubauer, but Colorado was able to re-sign Gabriel Landeskog and is still the gem of the Central Division. So I do have them coming in as an easy first place selection. But then that's going to leave Winnipeg, Chicago, Minnesota, St. Louis, and Dallas to battle it out for the next three to four spots and seeing as the fact that the pacific division is so weak this year oh yeah super weak you could be looking at four teams from the central so that being said there may be one or two odd teams out in the central division where i see this squaring up i truly do see winnipeg landing in position two or three in the central as they will have a lot of hotly contested games where they win by a goal with defensive first structures the jets will also have plenty of games where they blow out a few teams because of goal scoring and we know because of the winnipeg jets they'll be blown out a couple times as well too do not be surprised if the jets lose to arizona we have a tendency to lose to bottom teams like that the chicago blackhawks i think are making a massive push at the stanley cup with a healthy jonathan tays pat Patrick Kane, Seth Jones coming in replacing Duncan Keith and now Marc-Andre Fleury, who I fully expect to suit up and play for the Blackhawks. They truly are another cup contender and a threat. So I see the Jets and the Blackhawks 
headed for a first round matchup. And that is tough to call because Minnesota had a fantastic year last year and they're only getting better. Minnesota needs to sign Kaprizov and losing Suter and Parise definitely don't help. They help the cap situation, but Minnesota is a really strong, dangerous team. So wild fans, if you end up second, third, heck, even first in the division, I'm not going to be surprised, but I've got to slot you in somewhere. So I have you slotted in at number four. And I think you're a very good candidate to knock off the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. So please help us out with that. Following that, St. Louis and Dallas could still be tricky and dangerous as they both still have a few elite players remaining from their Stanley Cup final appearance and their Stanley Cup wins, plus decent goaltending at both. So either one of those teams could replace any one of the teams with the exception of the Colorado Avalanche in the playoff picture there. So the Central once again becomes a very hotly contested division. This is going to be a battle. The clear question for Winnipeg is, do they have enough depth, size, and scoring ability to survive the viciously physical Central get out of it, win, and actually defeat a Pacific Division opponent. We know they lost to Vegas in the conference final after a war with Nashville up to Game 7, and Vegas pretty much walked through us in five games, even though we won the first. So Winnipeg is going to have to win the War of Attrition, stay healthy, and stay out of the crap, and learn how to score and keep pucks out of the net in order to get through the playoffs as unscathed as possible through a very difficult division in bracket. Bracket bracket. So that is my breakdown for the Winnipeg Jets this year. More signings to come. Stay tuned to Hot Garbage Sports.